Ciao friends and welcome to a new video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to talk about the value filter behavior property that you can set in your Power BI semantic model. Value filter behavior appeared a few months ago and uh, uh, you can uh, work and you can think about the value filter behavior in two ways. The easy way is uh, rather simple. Go to your model, go to the value filter behavior setting, set it, to, set it to independent and live a happy life. If you're happy with that, you can close the video, do that operation and all your numbers will be more correct than they were before. Not more correct, but easier to understand. That's the real point. If on the other hand, you want to understand it a bit better, well, in this video, I'm going to introduce a value filter behavior and show you uh, how it changes the numbers. Unfortunately, understanding all the details about value filter behavior requires understanding a lot more about summary columns. Because what the value filter behavior does is it changes the way filters in summary columns are used. Filters in summary columns are used both to define the group by tuples, so the values to show uh, as a result of summary columns, and to filter the measures which are computed on the fly during the calculation of uh, the result of summarized columns. Uh, the setting can be coalesced or independent. With coalesced, the filters are coalesced together. With independent, the filters are applied separately. This affects the measures, but not the group by tuples. As I told you, it's really, really complicated. And in SQL BI Plus, we uh, published a white paper that describes all this stuff in much more details. But unfortunately, it's an extremely complicated white paper, more than 50 pages of intricate DAX code. So in this video, I'm going to introduce the topic. But if you want to know more, actually, you really need to go to the paper and read it in its entirety. Anyway, let's get started looking at the demo. I have uh, our usual Contoso model and I created a report that show, I have a slicer by brand, a slicer by category and a matrix that shows by category number of products and all brands. Number of products just do a count rows of products, so it counts the number of products for each category and brand. And all brands computes the number of products but it removes the filter over the brand. And if I put them in a matrix, you see they produce the same number because right now I'm not filtering any brand. So number of products and number of products of all brands, they produce the same result. Now, understanding why value filter behavior is useful requires uh, uh, first showing numbers that seem not to make any sense. I can use the slicer by brand and filter any brand, but specifically I'm interested in a datum. Why that? Because Adatum only sells one category, that is cameras and camcorders. If I select Adatum, you see that uh, the sh it shows in the other slicer only cameras and camcorders, but the report looks weird because it shows one row, 132 and 372, that is correct, but at the total it shows 132 and 2517, which is the total number of products in the entire model. So how comes that the total is not 372? Well, understanding it requires uh, uh, looking at the details about summary columns. So let me grab the query that is being executed. Uh, let's uh, use performance. Oh, it was already open. Start recording. Let's get this visual and let's copy the DAX query. I paste it here and I make it a bit simpler because I want to focus on only the summary column part. So let me just make it simpler by removing most of it. The query is using summary columns. It's a compute, it's grouping by category and category code because category is sorted by category code. It's placing a filter for the brand and it's computing number of products and all brands. Now summary columns works in two steps. First, it finds uh, the group by tuples, that is, the rows that it will need to return. And it uses the filter 
The filter is saying I'm only interested in a brand. So we know that the only category that is going to be returned is camera same camcorder, one row. After this step is done, the engine knows the group by tuple, so the, num the, the rows that needs to be returned. The second step is the evaluation of uh, uh, the measures for the group by tuples. And remember, we only have one. So for the only row ca camera same camcorders, it computes a number of products and that produces a number and it computes all brands, the same value with no filter over the brand. So we remove the filter over a datum, but we still have the filter over the category. So we produce uh, the uh, number of products of all brands of the given category. And that's it. No more rows are produced. At the total level, at the total level, the filter coming from uh, the category camera and camcorders is gone. The only filter remaining is a datum. Sales all brands removes the filter over the brand, and so it shows 2517. That is all the rows are. Meaning that uh, the result looks weird, but it is actually correct because it's showing uh, the number of all products uh, with no filter over the category, no filter over the brand. Confusion comes from the fact that it only shows one row. It should show cameras and concordance and all the other categories with the number of brands because all brands produces a result for categories which are not sold by a datum but we are not seeing the value. So it's not that the number is wrong, it's uh, hard to understand because um, the engine shows only one row, because Sunrise column produces the group by tuples using the filter as its first step. And if a row is not being returned as part of the group by tuples, you will never see that row. So confusing, but not wrong. Things can be much more complicated than that. Because uh, uh, let's get rid of the filter over a datum. We know a datum filters cameras and concorders, so sells cameras and concorders. So we select cameras and concorders, and we can also select another row like cell phones. Now the total number of brands is now 657. What happens if with this filter over the category I filter again a datum? I would expect to see 372 and then 657 at the total, because I do have a filter over category, I remove the one on the brand, and I should see the total. However, the result is quite surprising. You see that you see 132, 372, and 372. So I'm not seeing cell phones. The filter over category seems to be uh, ignored, and I'm only showing the values of a datum. Again, understanding the reason why requires looking at the query. So let me clear, refresh the visual, grab the code of the matrix, and we paste it again. This time we have two filters. One is a datum, the same we had before, and then we also have a filter over the category, which is here. We can remove all the remaining part. Okay, format this code and run it. And you see we have the same result we had before. But understanding the reason why now requires a bit more effort. We know the engine defines the group by tuple. So under the filter for eight atoms and cameras and camcorders and cell phones, it finds the group by tuples. And it will only find cameras and camcorders because the filter over eight atoms is more restrictive than the filter over cameras and camcorders and cell phones. But what happens at the total level? At the total level, I'm removing the filter over the brand, so I would expect this filter to become active again and see both cameras and camcorders and cell phones. But this is where value filter behavior kicks in. The engine, not the engine, summarize columns implements clustering, which is also known as auto-exist. Auto-exist means that if multiple filters and multiple group by columns are coming from are part of the same table, all those filters will be coalesced. Coalesced means that they will be working together and they are joined, merged together into one single filter. 
So the filter over product brand and the filter over cameras and camcorders, despite being separate filters, they are coalesced in one filter only. Therefore, the engine, instead of using the two filters se separately, it creates uh, something like a summarizer of product by brand. I think I have written the query here. Yep. It takes uh, the two filters and coalesces them together into a single filter. Now, if I take the two filters and coalesce them into one filter, I obtain only one row that contains brand and category at the same time. This is the filter that the engine uses both to find the group by tuples and to compute the measure. Therefore, when it computes this measure or brands, the filter that is active is this one, filtering the brand and the category. If out of this filter I remove the brand, the category remains. And that is the reason why I see 372 rather than 657. That was the number that I would have expected. Because the filter over cell phones is actually gone. The engine is not using that filter because of the coalescing of different filters into one filter only. This behavior can be changed. You can set the value filter behavior that controls how different filters on the same table are used in the calculation of measures to two values, coalesced independent. Coalesced is uh, the default. Uh, if you set it to independent, then the filters will not be merged together. They will be two separate filters, one of the category, one of the brand. Therefore, the filter of the category will contain two categories and the filter of the brand contains only one brand. But if I remove the filter of the brand, the filter of the category will remain active, showing two categories. How do you change that? Well, you simply go to Power BI and in the properties of the model, in the semantic model, you have here the value filter behavior. The default is automatic, meaning that it remains coalesced, the current value, until the feature goes GA. Then new models will be uh, independent. But my suggestion is go to independent. Make it independent for all of your models. You will never regret that. Doing, make, moving it to independent, we can just look at the, the same report we were looking at a few seconds ago. And now you see that I see 132, 372. 132, 657. Why that? Because now the two filters are separate, so the filter over the brand is removed. The filter over category, that is a separate filters, filter, is being kept, and it shows 657, that is the total number of uh, uh, products uh, of any brand, but of the two categories which are being selected. An important detail is that value filter behavior changes the way uh, the filters are used in the measures. It does not change auto exist. Auto exist, which comes from clustering, is active in the calculation of uh, the group by tuples. And uh, the group by tuples still use the filter coalesced. Things can be much more complicated than that. But if you are interested in this kind of topic, then the SQL BI Plus white paper is what you really need to read. It's a very heavy uh, read, but definitely worth if you are interested in these kind of uh, settings. So, as you have seen, value filter behavior has three values. Uh, in basically, two are the important one. Automatic uh, keeps uh, uh, coalesced for models, uh, but it will move to independent uh, uh, for new models after the feature goes GA. Uh, the default value for existing model is coalesced. Coalesced is a complex value. It has always been a troublesome for most DAX developers because numbers are really hard to understand and read. So the best thing that you can do is uh, go to your model, set it to independent and live happily. If you want to understand more, well, Probably a second view of the video and some tests by yourself might be needed, but the conclusion will still be go to independent. 
And if you really want to go into further details, well, the SQL BI Plus uh, white paper is definitely what you need to read. It contains all what we know so far about summaries column, clustering, auto-exist, and value filter behavior. Enjoy that! <laughs>